I get questions here and there that usually have to do with the concept of improvement in this game. While I have given advice on a case-by-case -case basis, whether it was for specific patterns, playstyles, hand position, etc., I thought I should finally get around to making a comprehensive improvement guide for this game. This tutorial is meant for people that have at least a slight grip of the game, as people who are beginners should continue to explore the game as it is and should come back to this video once they figure out their general skill sets. I plan to make a beginner's guide in the future to help players get set up with the game, but for now, this video will be for at least somewhat experienced players. We'll be going over 6 things in this video along with some general things near the end. These 6 categories are hand position, accuracy, jacks, jump stream slash hand stream, speed, and technicality. With that said, let's start with hand position. Mina Statmania Cron Articles paper describes hand position amazingly, and if you would like to know more about hand position, I highly suggest you go check it out. There are two main hand positions that people use in this game, wrist up and wrist down. There are advantages and disadvantages to both of these play styles, so let us start with wrist down. Wrist down is usually every player's go-to playstyle when they first play the game. Since the game emulates a typing-like motion, players are more inclined to play the game that way with their wrist usually planted on their desk. The main advantages that come with wrist down are more efficient one-hand trilling, feels much more natural to the player, and requires less movement overall. Its main disadvantages revolve around issues playing anchor slash jack heavy patterns and transitions, muscles around the forearm tend to be strained a bit more, and along with that, make a player a little more likely to receive wrist related injuries. Notable wrist down players include Snover, It's Jake, and Jakadz. Wrist up's advantages and disadvantages are quite different. Since your wrists are hovered above the keyboard all the time, this allows a player to utilize different methods of hitting certain patterns since wrist up facilitates a striking like motion, as opposed to the smoother wrist down play style. Anchors and jack transitioning become much easier to execute as well, as a player will not have the need to change hand positions to hit patterns like this as some players will try to do at times. Wrist up however takes a bit longer to learn compared to wrist down, so it can take some time to learn good control when playing. Lastly, wrist up also requires more effort to maintain due to the amount of muscles a player needs to develop in order to play wrist up efficiently. Notable wrist up players include Mina and myself. Before I start talking about accuracy, I should note that some of the ratios I'm going to mention might not apply to files that are huge outliers in Eterna, most notably referring to extremely short files. We're going to break accuracy into two simple subcategories also known as marvelous and perfect ratios. Improving your accuracy can be the very thing you need in order to squeeze out those few extra points to get that double A you've been going for, even if it means just getting a few less perfects and greats. Or it can mean getting that wife quad that you've always been waiting for just because your marvel says we're just a bit more on time now. Focusing on purely miscounts is a bad habit players tend to develop and can result in weaker fundamentals overall. Even if you have to start much lower on the difficulty side to focus efficiently on proving your accuracy, the goal is just to help you get a better feel of the timing windows. 4 to 1 MA ratios and 5 to 1 PA ratios are relatively decent benchmarks to shoot for, however these are the lowest ratios you should aim for and anything more will do nothing but help to obtain that 93% or more you want. For files that you want to 97 plus such as PA scores or even AAA and wife quad, some people have done what is called Judge 7 training, where they play on a much tighter timing window to make the Judge 4 or 5 window feel marginally easier after slowly building their comfort zone with Judge 7. If you don't notice any improvement with Judge 7, using lower judgments or even the judgment you normally use is fine, as long as you are playing stuff that you can gauge a sense of improvement with, even if you have to play much easier stuff than you're used to. Accuracy can come more naturally to some players than others, so don't be discouraged if you're not quadding files right away or having insane MA or PA on your second week practicing. A method I've seen some players do to improve speed is what I like to call the baseball bat method, where a baseball player puts a weight on their bat and it feels super heavy to swing. Once they take the bat off, they are now able to swing much faster. While this is to help and is proven to work quite a bit, the same principle doesn't necessarily translate to 4 key. For example, in Eterna a player would play 400 BPM streams constantly to try and make 360 streams feel easier. This brute force method can work in some instances, but could potentially produce very bad accuracy habits or could cause injury due to the nature of such a brute force method, also known as overtraining. One of the biggest obstacles that come with improving speed is reading. I would constantly find myself CB rushing not because I was falling behind necessarily, but because I was misreading patterns due to not being familiar with patterns at that speed. By playing it on a rate you're able to 96 and up, you're improving your pattern recognition skills, and with that alone you've already fought half the battle. Wrist rotation is also very important. Given the amount of subtle mini jacks, anchors, and other brutal patterns that can be hidden throughout these insanely fast streams, rotating your wrists will allow you to hit patterns that require those muscles. For example, if you see a right hand 4-3-4 stream in the middle of a fast stream, you'll rotate your wrist slightly to the right quickly to execute the pattern without falling behind. This may sound like a bit much, but it starts to become natural once you realize how it works. 
This also applies to patterns with heavy one hand trilling as well. Not rotating your wrist will prevent players from being able to transition in and out of certain patterns. Lastly, try not to hit super early and abuse the early window too much. Sometimes players will do this to get a head start on the streams, to prevent themselves from falling behind, or to get themselves back on track. But this sets up for extremely poor accuracy and can be one of the main causes for CB rushes if done recklessly enough. I'm grouping these together due to their similarity, but they do have some differences between them. Let's start with Jumpstream. Jumpstream is probably the most common style of play, as it is the most accessible genre not just in terms of its learning curve, but also the amount of Jumpstream files created for the game. Jumpstream is most commonly found in stamina files and stays on the lighter side for speed-oriented files, normally with a jump on every fourth note or perhaps a little less at times. To cover the stamina aspect of Jumpstream, it really boils down to playing stuff slightly out of your comfort zone, but not too much to the point where you're burning yourself out halfway through your session due to stamina. This is where I'll throw the 96% principle out again. Try to find a rate that is just hard enough to acquire a score like that, and then test out your progress by going for double A scores along the way. Jumpstream is pretty light on the reading side compared to other playstyles, as jumpstream patterns are normally not too intricate, but to ensure you do not force any mind blocks, try your best to hit every pattern legitimately. Manipulating patterns as shown here will reduce accuracy and develop reading habits too as a result. Handstream comes with all these principles, but the reading aspect is much more crucial. Handstream is one of those things that you might need to work with a much, much slower BPM that you're used to, because the amount of transitions that you need to not just know how to read, but physically hit as well, as there are a ton of variations the player should be aware of and how much muscle memory needs to be acquired for them. Other than that, that's pretty much it. I'm mainly going to talk about core jacks, as many jacks will pretty much improve as you begin to develop more efficient core jack stamina. Core jacks are the most straightforward skill to learn and can even benefit other skill sets, as it is one of the building blocks for general stamina building in my opinion. To use core jacks to improve your stamina, you want to focus on more dense and slightly slower core jacks to get that constant range of motion in almost every finger and in both wrists. If you want to develop a more explosive type of play and get better at quicker jack and anchory patterns, there are slightly lighter and faster core jack files that will still allow you to improve your stamina, but now be able to anchor a bit more comfortably and hit faster jack transitions. As for reading core jack files specifically, I and other people have normally just tried looking for the holes in these files to isolate the arrow you are not hitting when doing core jacks. This applies for mainly the denser side, but the same principle can be applied just as well for lighter core jacks. The concept of a file being technical can be rather vague at times, but hopefully I could demonstrate enough examples for you to get a gist of what I mean. In this context, technical files are files that are normally less traditional in the meta and force the player to approach the game differently involving patterns that can be very unique, hard to read, and can have constantly changing rhythms throughout the song. Technical files can also have a combination of just about every skill set and can serve as a test of a player's fundamentals, hence using multiple different techniques to hit such patterns. On the calmer side, we have a file like Pianoforte, a very gracious piano file loaded with flams, fast trills, jacks, and all sorts of things to keep the player on their toes. A file that is meant to be charted purely off the music alone, which is one of the ways technical files are charted. On the harder side, we have what are called technical dumps, which have been much more prevalent in the 4-key scene regarding technical files. Lofty's mini packs and the minty packs are all great examples of files with absurdly fast anchors, polyrhythms, changing VPMs, and really any pattern you can think of to force the player to hit the pattern as it is. There are more definitions of what can constitute a technical file, but in this meta today, this is usually the main set of files that are denoted as such. Now that we've explained them, how do we get better at these types of files? How do we get better at these files that are unlike anything we've discussed so far? To be completely honest, it seems to be a matter of discipline for technical files from what I've seen in the past. Often players are very thrown off by how awkward or confusing these types of files are, and can be very hard to get into if you come from a background of files that were normally very straightforward or accurately charted to the music. The best advice I can honestly give is to immerse yourself with as many files as possible. Most files have their own unique shtick to it, so try to recognize yourself with every possible pattern and to know how and when to strain certain patterns, as technical files tend to have insanely tricky bursts in them and if a player is not prepared, you can fall behind quite fast. Lastly, technical dumps are also very over-exaggerated at times, and can be hard to determine where it goes to the music, so try not to shift your focus to the music specifically, as silly as that sounds. With files that have BPMs shifting all over the place, it's very easy to lose track. To summarize, there are two main hand positions, wrist up and wrist down. Wrist down feels more natural, less movement, and trilling is better, but are more prone to injuries. 
Wrist up players are able to hit jack heavy patterns better due to the striking like motion and are also less prone to injuries. For accuracy, shoot for a 4 to 1 MA and 5 to 1 PA ratios for double A related scores. Use higher judges and play slower files to get comfortable with the timing windows you play on for accuracy specific scores. For speed, ease your way into each speed and try not to get too carried away. Learn to recognize the patterns with 96% and up scores and test your speed here and there by playing double A goal material for benchmarks. Wrist rotation helps a bunch too. For jump stream and hand stream, the stamina part of jump stream files is more important in my opinion. Reading normally won't be an issue. Hand stream is where reading becomes much more detrimental and accuracy management is harder too. For jacks, mini jacks will improve as you do core jacks. Core jacks are one of the most straightforward ways to build stamina. Dense, slow core jacks for stamina oriented files, and slightly less dense but faster core jacks for more explosive jack like patterns. Lastly, for technical files, they are very reading based and try to familiarize yourself with every file you can. Try not to think about the music too much, as silly as that sounds, and recognize when and how to strain to hit certain patterns, but not too much. Try not to manipulate patterns. This will result in poor accuracy and habits. Absurdly fast rolls and other examples are exceptions to this. Try to keep your sessions between 1 to 2.5 hours. Anything longer and you could run into the potential of injury. A few days a week will still be enough to improve at this game just fine. If you miss a day of playing, it's not an issue at all. Take breaks if need be. This game is both physically and mentally tiring, so don't try to force sessions if you don't want to play. And lastly, have fun. Thank you all so much for watching. I know this tutorial might sound a little vague, but hopefully I was able to break down the fundamentals of improving at each aspect of the game in the shortest and most concise way I possibly could. I hope to potentially break down each of these skill sets in depth in later videos, but I thought I should lay out the basics of what you need to know for each one. Be sure to check out my Patreon page to help support me on my journey to making this game as accessible as possible, as there are definitely more videos like this on the way. Shoutouts to Patron Princess well for supporting the channel as well. Be sure to check out my other sellout links in the description. I'll see you all in whatever video I upload next, and take care.